Okay, we have one more method to fill in uh, to finish up our output module. <clears throat> this method is update state. Um, this is where we're, we are going to be getting um, any information from Vixen so that we can fill in our byte array um, and send it out to our COM port. Um, now, if you're familiar with the old way that Vixen did things, um, for output plugins, what it would do is it would send a byte array um, and then we could just send that byte array out to our COM port. Uh, Vixen 3 handles things a little bit differently. Um, it does not assume that we are looking for an array of bytes. Uh, what it does is it sends a, an array of commands. Um, these commands are actually uh, objects uh, generated by effects um, and we can use these commands to get the information that we're looking for. Now, first thing we need to know is um, any number of effects can send any number of commands to your output plugin. So this means we have to filter out all the commands that we do not want uh, so that we only have access to the ones that we do want to handle. Now, in order to be able to do this, we have to understand a little bit more about commands. Um, first off, um, and I have a little cheat sheet here, um, there is a command hierarchy. Um, at the top level, it is a platform. Um, then comes a category, and then comes the command itself. Now, for example, let's use an example of if we were using Vix, Vixen to control my refrigerator. The platform might be uh, my refrigerator. Uh, some of the categories under my refrigerator might be uh, left door or right door, um, and some commands might be open the door and close the door. Now. First of all, kudos to anybody who makes a funny comment uh, about uh, controlling my refrigerator. That'll at least let me know that you made it this far and hopefully are doing okay. Um, but handling it this way gives us a lot of benefit over the old ways. Um, for example, if I want my module to only handle opening um, the refrigerator door, all I would have to do is specify and say, hey, if that command is a my refrigerator uh, right door open, we're going to look at it and we'll, we'll handle that. Um, if I want to handle absolutely everything that refers to my refrigerator, all I have to do is say, hey, is that, is that command, um, is the platform uh, my refrigerator? If it is, we'll handle it. If not, we totally ignore it. A um, couple things to realize, each command when it's sent to us has an identifier, a three-part identifier that states its platform, the platform it belongs to, the category it belongs to, and the command it belongs to. So for example, if, if Vixen sends us a command to open the refrigerator door, we can look at that identifier and we can, we can see that it is part of the refrigerator platform, uh, we can see that it is part of the uh, right door platform, and we can see uh, that it is the command that we are looking for. Now, also, each platform itself, each category, and each command has its own value to compare the identifier to. What that means is inside my refrigerator platform, there is a my refrigerator platform dot value. That value identifies that platform so that we can basically compare. We can say our command, okay, if our command is equal to my refrigerator dot value, um, we are going to use it. Now, once we get into concrete writing things down, uh, that might make a little bit more sense. But um, let's go now and look at actual uh, real life. Um, commands that are available to us. I'm sure nobody really wants to control my refrigerator. And I don't want you controlling it and leaving it open and wasting all my electricity. So it works out both ways. Um, let's look into the object browser. 
Um, and I already have that expanded, but if you don't, expand Vixen and expand Vixen.commands. This is the base class for um, all of Vixen commands. Now, a couple things to notice. Um, you will see these single ones here. These are platforms. Um, remember I said there's a hierarchy. Platform is the highest one. Next one down is category. So this one right below it is, is animatronics, which is the platform dot basic positioning. That is the category. Um, these ones with three on here, platform is animatronics. Category is basic positioning. Uh, the command is set position. So the one we are going to be using is is the lighting platform. Uh, one thing I want you to notice, if you highlight lighting, it does have a value here. So we can basically say, okay, if our, if our uh, command that we received um, is equal to, uh, if the identifier platform is equal to uh, lighting.value, then we know we have a lighting platform uh, command. Uh, same thing with this is uh, lighting is platform custom is the category we also have a couple other categories we can we can look at under lighting um, and that is uh, we have monochrome we also have a polychrome category so we could say okay we want to handle lighting but we only want to handle lighting dot monochrome um, and here is another example of a command and this happens to be the command that we will be using now as I briefly said before this uh, lighting dot monochrome dot set level is a command it is not our actual data but it gives us access to um, what we want um, in fact in this case um, if you look to the right you will see level here is a, a member of um, that class and that is that is what actually contains our data okay so let's play around a little bit uh, to hopefully get a little bit more of an understanding we're actually not going to be programming for our module in this part we'll save that for next part I just want the understanding there um, let's go into our instance class the first thing when we are dealing with commands first thing we need to do is we need to import the namespace um, so go to the top and type in using vixen dot commands. This gives us access to, access to the uh, commands namespace. And just for playing, um, just so I can show you how we're going to do some of this stuff, uh, let's make a command. You don't have to type this if you don't want to. Uh, this is actually not part of our module. Um, and let's put the, set this as output states zero. That is the first. Um, that is the first. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that filled in an output states here. That's why I got that error message. That should be zero. Um, that is the first command that we received in the array. Now. Like I said before, in, in our instance, we know exactly what type of uh, command we are looking for. So we can simply say um, if the command we're looking at is lighting.monochrome.set level, and then we can go ahead and use it. Now, this is great in our instance, and it's simple, and it's the easiest way to go. So we will be using that. But in other uh, modules that you might be creating, you might want to handle um, things that are at much more of a higher level. Say you want to handle the entire lighting platform. In order to do that, what you need to do is <clears throat> compare that um, command identifier I was talking about um, to the lighting uh, platform value. So what you would do in that case is if command um, dot identifier, uh, let's do platform because we're looking to handle the entire platform is equal to lighting dot value. Now what this will do is 
any any command that comes through that is of the lighting uh, platform we will handle you could do the same thing with uh, categories if you if you just wanted to handle a certain lighting category um, you would type category here and you would set that equal to uh, lighting dot uh, let's say monochrome dot value that will allow us to look at every single command that comes through that is in the category of lighting monochrome again this all depends exactly what you're going to be doing in your module um, how you want to handle it this this second way is much more involved uh, but it also gives you a lot more freedom to handle a lot more um, a lot more uh, different commands coming in okay so I, I think that basically explains what the categories are or what the commands are and uh, how we're going to handle them so let's just clean clean this up a little bit um, and then in the next part we will actually uh, deal with the commands that that we need for our module